Well, 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 here we are again. I don't often re-release my videos, but I also don't often get hit with copyright strikes. But I wanted to do like 30 seconds of karaoke from CeeLo's I Wish, and that got me hit. So I'm re-releasing that previous video with new audio re-recorded by my family doing it in acapella. So you'll get to enjoy that. Also, though, I'm going to add some additional thoughts about this printer at the end because I've had a lot more time to use it, and um, I don't know. Maybe you guys will enjoy what I have to say about that, but for now, here's what I said before about the Toybox 3D printer. The Toybox 3D printer is one that, if you're into 3D printing, or if you've done 3D printing, or even if you know just a little bit about 3D printing, chances are when you saw this 3D printer, you started to sing this song. I wish it were a little bit taller, I wish it were broader, I wish it had controls on the UF or the Z jog. I wish it could print offline. And you know what? I did too. When I first saw this machine, I just said, why? Why would I want this machine? But if you can look past those limitations and actually give this machine a try, what you will find is the little 3D printer that could. Engineering-wise, it's actually surprisingly well-built with a direct drive extruder. The movement system is XYZ prime, which means that your prints aren't being flung around on the bed, and so you're going to get more accurate prints. And the small size of it actually works to its advantage because it can be very stable and very rigid with this metal frame that it's working with. Whenever I judge a 3D printer, I don't just judge it based on the price or the capability, what it can do. I also judge it based on how easy it is to use. I think that there's value in a 3D printer that's, well, one, that's functional. I, I think that a 3D printer that you can actually use reliably is more valuable than a 3D printer that could theoretically do cool things if you could just find the time to tinker with it. But more than that, well, I know for myself, every time I do a 3D print, I do this little calculation in my head and I think, okay, I'm going to have to run out to the 3D printer, grab the media, take it over to my computer, turn on the slicer, load up the file, get my settings right, save the file, go back to the printer. This machine cuts right through all of that. And the toy box makes 3D printing so easy that it actually becomes difficult not to 3D print with it. How easy is it to 3D print with it? Well, this easy. Yeah, I handed this machine to my kids for just a month and they ran through several of these sp little spools of filament. And I do kind of love the little spools. Remind me to tell you about these later. But yeah, I they ran through these spools and printed just everything. I mean, okay, the way it works is when you get this printer, you hook it up to the web. You have to connect it to your Wi-Fi. And once you do that, you go to their app or to their website. You say, hey, I want to print this. And you 3D print a cute little piggy bank that prints in two parts that my, my eight-year-old daughter was like, ooh, I want that. She made it. And she colored it and made it her own. And that is brilliant. You know another thing that she made? She made this little little disc launcher. It's got this little clip in here. She printed it. She assembled it. It took her a little while to do, but because it was on their platform and she could go, ooh, I want it, beep. And the printer sprung to life and just gave it to her. She built something. This is remarkable. You know, my, my other daughter, a little bit older than the first one, she discovered that they had an app on there that you could load your own pictures into, and it will turn it into grayscale depth images. And I said, hey, you know, if you take your images and make them negative before you put it in, you'll get a lithophane. And sure enough, in here, you know, there's a couple of lithophanes that she made all by herself and didn't need me to hold her hand almost at all. Oh, what do we got here? We got a, a heart-shaped box with hearts on it. We've got, oh, uh, Flowlistics Low Poly Link. I absolutely love that. They have these really cool uh, mystery eggs. You don't know what's inside of them until you crack them open. They print in two parts that are very, very close that you can pop open and get it to print inside of them. And this is fun. Now, this is a premium 
model on their platform. They get you by saying, well, this one you're going to have to pay for. But, you know, it wasn't much. And honestly, it was well designed and good enough that I was like, yeah, I want to do that. This Infinity Cube, I think they're called. Uh, yeah, this one failed because, yeah, I hadn't I hadn't fixed the build plate properly. But once I did, here's one that works just fine. These are lots of fun to play with. And, you know, there that is. If you have a Toybox 3D printer or get one in the future, there's a little screw at the back of the build plate. And you're going to want to get a little hex wrench and loosen that up just a little bit. Because from the factory, they make that screw just a little bit too tight. What's that screw? That screw tells the 3D printer when the build plate is up to the top, and it's, it's designed so that you can adjust it a little bit. By default, they make it so that the nozzle is just a little too close to the build platform so that your first prints are going to stick and succeed. But if you want to do anything that has any level of, you know, needing dimensional accuracy, especially on the bottom, like print a block, then you're going to want to adjust that level so it doesn't squish too much at the beginning. You want it to just kind of touch that first layer perfectly. So, you know, loosen it up a little bit. And then if things aren't sticking, tighten it up just a little bit until you get it just right. And then your prints will turn out fantastic and we can all have a really good time. And at that point I said, you know what? I got to get my models on this platform. So I did, you know, here's a, here's some low poly dinos. That's going to be on the platform in a little while. The Chiba malls are on there. And of course there's print a block on here. In fact, this 3d printer was the platform that brought print a block back for me because I had to plate them for this small machine. I had to go back and look at the designs and I was like, gee, I need to, I need to make some modifications. And now I'm back into print a block big time. And it is all because of this 3d printer that we have to thank for that. And printer blocks work great on this 3D printer, provided that you get the settings right. See, the toy box, like I said, it connects to the web and their website, their application, pre-caches all the G code. And they can do that because they're really only servicing one printer. And so they know the settings for that one printer. Okay, so it caches the G code for that one printer. And whenever you say, hey, I want this thing, it beams it to this printer, loads it on the printer. It, it is loaded locally on the printer. You can take it off the Wi-Fi and it, it's fine. You don't have to have constant connection, just long enough for it to download. And the printer springs to life and starts printing. Actually, they do something really, really clever with it. When you say, I want this, and it beams it to the printer, the printer immediately jogs the head just a little bit, just to say, oh, I've received it and I'm moving and I'm getting ready, but it still has to do the preheat. So it's not going to start printing right there. That little jog does nothing but give you as the user a warm, fuzzy feeling of I pushed a button and it reacted. It's genius. It's simple. And I love it. And I mentioned it before, but I really enjoyed these smaller rolls of filament. Toy Box comes with half pound rolls of filament, which if you do the math is about a quarter of a kilogram. Now you might think, oh, well, you know, I, I would prefer to just buy the kilogram, but come on. First of all, you don't need to buy everything at Costco. And if you live in a place where a full kilogram of filament will eventually go bad if you don't use it fast enough, then why not get a smaller roll of filament that you can use up before it goes bad. Either that, or you got to spend extra on, you know, filament dryers or fancy ways to hold your filament and keep it dry and stuff like that. I mean, if that's what you want to do, great. If not, this is another great option. Of course, you can use the full-size rolls of filament. You just got to get, you know, a fancy filament holder for it off the back of the printer to do. And, you know, quite frankly, if you want to do that, hey, I've got one here that you can borrow. I got another one over here. In fact, I got two more, three more. Please, please take one off my hands, please. But, you know, no 3D printer is perfect. Every rose has its thorns. And this 3D printer has its problems. It's true. I had trouble getting it to connect to the Wi-Fi. Theoretically, the way it works is when you turn it on first, it broadcasts a Wi-Fi hotspot signal. You connect your phone to that hotspot and it says, hey, I've also detected these other Wi-Fi signals. Which one should I connect to and what's the password? Beep, 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 beep. Works. Except it didn't work. When I used my phone, didn't work. When I used my wife's phone, didn't work. When I used a laptop, 
it did work. And I was grateful that I had that option to do it. But if you don't have other Wi-Fi devices to try out and connect to it, you might be up a creek without an ability to do it because you can't just type in the password on the touchscreen. And I don't know why you can't because it does have a touchscreen and it could just say, which Wi-Fi should I connect to? Give me password. Yeah, it's a pain in the neck to type a password on the screen that's that small, but it could do it. Also, it's noisy, which is kind of a weird problem because you know, noisy 3D printers, you just put them out in the shed or the garage, but this 3D printer needs Wi-Fi to work, so you got to put it close to your Wi-Fi, and if you don't have Wi-Fi in the shed or the garage, where do you put this printer? And when I say that it's noisy, I mean the fans on it are very noisy. The motors might be noisy too, but I can't hear them over the fans. And their web service is kind of unusual. You don't realize it until you start uploading models yourself, but when you upload models, it's got very limited options. You don't get to choose infill or shells or anything like that. It's basically just three options. Do you want support or not? And a couple others. One of them is use Cura. Yes, Cura is a slicer on there, but as I discovered, it's an old version of Cura. It's pre-Cura 2, which means it's Cura 11, but that's actually Cura 1 version. Of, uh, never mind. It's old Cura. And old Cura had a very interesting problem. Whenever it would slice something, it would say, okay, this is the shape that I need to draw. And it would draw that shape on the line. But you're drawing with a 0.4 millimeter extrusion, which means that the line that they're drawing is actually 0.2 millimeters bigger than the, than the, Thing that you actually want to do, which in printer blocks is not enough to make it impossible to connect the connectors to. You can still do it. You just got to push a little bit harder. But when I turned off used Cura, the printer blocks worked much, much better. And I was able to get all of my printer block connectors working on all sides. Again, depending on you getting that build plate done properly. And, you know, I would really, really like it if the slicer online for this thing had a preview G-code option, just so that I could make sure that everything's on the build plate and looking properly. I had a problem with uh, with this print. I was, I was running through my usual test prints, and this is the one that I use to test supports, among other things. Test stringing, test details. Details came out good. Stringing came out good. Supports, I forgot to turn them on, and the print came out Ooh, messy, messy on the bottom. Now that was my fault, but if I had had a preview, I could have seen that was happening before the print went out. Still, overall, I think that this pile of 3D prints is a testament to the absolute brilliance and ingenuity of the Toy Box printer. And to the people at Toy Box who have been working with me to get the low poly dinos and the printer blocks and the Chiba Malls on your platform, Thank you guys. Thank you guys for doing such an amazing job with this 3D printer and really an inspiring job on it. You guys are absolutely amazing. Okay, so a couple more thoughts about this printer. One thing, first of all, that I didn't mention enough, I think, in the video is that this 3D printer is absolutely married to its web interface. Okay, if I wasn't clear about that, let me be clear about that. You cannot start a print on this 3D printer with an SD card or a USB stick. That's just not an option. You have to go to their web service in order to start a print. Now you can upload any print that you want there and start it, but you have to do it through their website or through their app, which kind of rubs some people the wrong way. I, I think the biggest complaint, and I feel this too, is that if they ever go out of business, your printer's bricked. If they ever decide, you know, hey, we're only going to, you know, we're going to charge 10 cents per print, no matter what you're printing, we couldn't stop them. Now, I don't see them doing that. That would be financial suicide if they were to do that. But yes, it is a legitimate concern that you're handing over control of your 3D printer to a third party. That said, in the time that I have owned this 3D printer, it has become my most used 3D printer, mostly printing printable, but I printed box after after box after box of, of printable blocks on this 3D printer. 
because it's just so easy to keep it going to, to hit another button and get another set of printer blocks out of it it's so easy to hand the app to my kids and say hey what do you want to print my my three-year-old daughter is printing out a train set right now four-year-old is she four-year-old she's four years old four years old four years old and she's looking through their app and going "Ooh, i want to print this train set and she's just starting prints and doing them and it's magical this printer is magical if you are into developing 3d printers if you're into the future of 3d printers i urge you get a toy box and try it out and even if you can't stand it hand it to somebody who doesn't really who, who's like seen your 3d printing stuff and been like eh, you know i'll let you do it hand this to them and let them do it and see what happens honestly it's it's amazing i i really I kind of love, I still kind of love this 3D printer, even after all this time. Toybox 3D printer absolutely gets a recommendation from me. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time.